Okay, so great. I've just uh, initiated the YouTube live stream, as probably you can see on the top. Uh, in a few minutes, in a minute or uh, in a couple of minutes, I will just start the webinar so that you know we can start welcoming our guests once we hit 2 p.m. Okay, so just a heads up, another minute to go. Once we hit sharp 2 p.m., I'm just going to, Indian Standard Time, I'm just going to start the webinar. And uh, once it's live, I'll initiate with the introduction. Okay, just starting. Okay, so the webinar is live. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for today's live session. Uh, this session is brought to you by the team at India's leading automotive events, Commercial Vehicle Forum and Two Wheeler Forum. Uh, we have collaborated with Here Technologies to bring you the session on Last Mile Excellence. And before we begin today's session, I wanted to take this time to especially thank our partner here, Technologies, for supporting this session. Uh, here, Technologies is a location data and technology platform that moves people, businesses, and cities forward by harnessing the power of location. By leveraging their open platform, they empower their customers to achieve better outcomes from helping a city manage its infrastructure or a business optimize its asset to guiding drivers to their destination safely. To learn more about here, you can visit here.com. So now coming to agenda for today's session, we will be having a panel discussion and we'll run few polls during the session. Then finally, we will close with an audience Q&A and a brief presentation at the end. So before we start the session, just wanted to share a small ground rule. I would request all you attendees to direct any questions that you may have to the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. I'm asking you to do that so that it can help us focus on your questions in a focused manner. And you can also upvote these questions. So this will help us in addressing the most burning topics. So please note once again, questions to be entered in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. So without further ado, I would now like to introduce our expert speaker group. Firstly, uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Siddharth Desai, who is an IITian and the co-founder of Clean Slate Technologies, a location intelligence company. Secondly, I would like to welcome Mr. Christoph Herzl, who is the head of fleet applications at Here Technologies and oversees the product management of innovation, innovative location-based applications for urban fleets. And prior to joining here, Christoph worked with Philips Lighting for over two decades. Our next speaker for the day is Mr. Adish Thakar, who is AVP Logistics at Zomato and leads end-to-end -end delivery operations for Zomato across India and UAE. 
He is responsible for delivery partner support uh, center, managing real time demand supply balance, and driving ops excellence. In fact, Adish has played an instrumental role in setting up Zomato's last mile fleet and its functioning. Finally, we have a moderator for the session, Mr. Pawan Mulukutla, who is the director of Electric Mobility Program and the Sustainable Cities at World Resources Institute, India. Pawan has almost two decades of experience in the urban uh, mobility ecosystem and prior to joining WRI India, had worked at Bosch for close to two years, setting up the e-mobility, e-micromobility connected solution program. So over to you, Pawan. Thank you, Rohit, and a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to this very interesting um, webinar and discussion. Uh, Rohit, I think you'll have to move the spotlight to the speaker. So, so welcome again, once again on the um, panel. And um, I hope we have some interesting discussion and uh, last mile solutions to our um, cities. Um, so we will get started by, I would request each of the panelists with the first question on um, uh, how we are actually addressing, how you are addressing last mile logistics and what are some of the challenges that you have faced in your own organization. We could start with that. But before that, I would say that, um, could we do a poll, Rohit, for the very first question? Rohit? So while we figure out um, the poll question, so Christoph, I wanted to hear from you that, you know, how has been the last mile? Okay, sorry, so there is the poll here. So I would really request each of you to take this question, if you can take a moment, that India has its unique set of challenge. And what do you think is one of the biggest challenge in last mile supply chains? The question must have popped up on your screen. So I request each of you to um, address this and respond to this question, please. Pavan, maybe in the meantime, you can continue with the discussion. Yeah, sure. So Christoph, we'll start with you. Um, if you could introduce in terms of what your organization or your company is looking at and specifically how you're really addressing the issue of last mile delivery. Over to you. Uh, Pavan, for this question. So the um, for here technologies, uh, anything related to logistics and supply chain comes down to location. And location, when you think about, um, so uh, goods have to move not only from A to B, but they also have to be, in many cases, uh, handed over at special locations. You need to know uh, what is happening, actually, while you're on the drive to the customer. So um, dynamic information about uh, the traffic situation is of utmost importance. So for us, it's actually the uh, availability of uh, the best uh, digital content maps for the road network uh, connecting to the uh, to the buildings and the right entrances and then secondly uh, meshing that up with real-time information from the from the streets so uh, we can actually predict not only plan when somebody is at a certain place and can uh, deliver but also make sure that we, during this process, uh, keep the estimated time of arrival always um, uh, available to anybody in the supply chain, uh, be it the logistics service provider, actually the shipper who has an interest that uh, the customer time window is met and the consumer uh, themselves to receive the goods. So for us, everything, the fabric between everything is location. And uh, we are actually providing an open platform to make that happen. Thank you very much, Christoph. So I'll get back to you. I have some questions. It was something interesting that you measure, um, um, shared with us that location has been very, very critical in your planning. Um, I'll get back to you in the second round. So Adish, um, you know, it was very interesting to hear when Rohit was mentioning that, you know, you were involved in designing the entire last mile plan for Zomato. So what were some of the challenges you faced and uh, can you really share with our audience, you know, how you went about planning this whole last mile delivery? Uh, thanks, for and thanks for that question. Um, so uh, as in like, uh, in terms of, I was a part of the team, which uh, basically we started uh, operations or logistics operations at Zomato. 
so zomato primarily as as most of us know that we are into a business of food um, and one part of our business is online ordering which uh, we, where we uh, ensure that the food is reaching to the consumer whenever the consumer wants it um and uh, as in like around 3 4 years back somato uh, used to be in a service where we used to allow restaurants to deliver their own food uh and we never used to manage the logistics of that but while we were doing that we realized that it is very very important for us to me- measure the or uh, uh, control the complete experience of a customer so that we can provide the best in class service for each and every customer that is there and that is where we started working towards uh, uh the the last mile operations or the delivery operations in the food delivery business um in terms of the challenges uh, i think uh, india as in like basically food has two specific things apart from any other uh, logistics operations one basically uh, the hyper localness of the business food is prepared cooked and needs to be delivered in 20 30 minutes of its preparation so that provides a very unique challenge in terms of how can you manage that on time um, on demand uh, demand and supply balance like you always have peaky business like your lunch demand to dinner demand is different uh, your off peak demand is very different your weekends are heavier compared to the rest of the day so these are some of the uh, interesting uh, data points that we get and how do we balance that with the supply is something that is very interesting in solving the problems and and ensuring that uh, we can provide uh, the best customer experience with the highest amount of efficiency that we can bring about on the platform uh, so that's that's what we do in terms of uh, our online ordering business the last mile operations or logistics is one of the core pillars that we build our operations upon and um, i think with the scale that we operate now it is very important to look at every data point in its minutest detail in terms of how the deviations in traffic or how the deviations in demand patterns is actually impacting the overall supply chain uh because in terms of people who are delivering in 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 an on di- on demand scenario uh the number of uh, people that you have is limited and uh, to manage that demand and supply even a minute here and there uh can basically impact the overall planning and the demand supply balance at that point of time so that is something that we maintain and uh, try to optimize at a real time to ensure that we can serve to the maximum amount of consumers at uh, the maximum amount of efficiency with the best customer experience at the same time just as a follow up question um, adish like um, you know it would be very interesting to hear um, your experience in this whole i don't know should we even call it post covid but through covid or whatever situation we are in right now and we see that you know food deliveries really went up really high at certain times so how did you manage because you brought about something very interesting you talked about the traffic conditions so you didn't have any traffic conditions but at least during the last few um uh, months but in terms of demand you know what have you seen are there some numbers that you can throw to us and you know how have you managed did you have to pivot your whole business plan or you know what did it, what kind of thinking or planning went into that so i think uh, like all the industries the initial first month for us also was very challenging to understand what exactly is changing uh, and a lot of things changed uh, one one thing was that everyone was scared at that point of time not only uh, the people who were delivering but the people who were ordering uh, even the restaurants all three partners in the supply chain uh, which is the delivery uh, partner who is going to deliver the restaurant partner would he operate or not or the consumer who is going to order or not so all of these three things go went into a very very uh, different uh, how should i say a, a scared cycle where they were not able to understand is it safe is it not safe uh, there were a lot of concerns that were going around that but over a period of time what we saw was um, uh, uh, and then the who also released a guideline that food is safe cooked food is safe you can have food and the chances of covid spreading through food is very very less uh, and that is uh, and then in times when people cannot go out i think food is the only way people can celebrate anything so that is what uh, uh, as in like was was something that we wanted to cater to uh, so during the first couple of months uh, we uh, actually try to understand what is the consumers need at that point of time so there were two pivotal uh, changes that we did at that point of time one was basically uh, we moved a bit away or we tried to start uh, operations into grocery deliveries as well so we knew that we have a platform and there are uh, grocery something that is an essential and people were not allowed to go out so how can we leverage that supply chain 
and provided the best in class customer experience or provided at, at the time when people needed the most how can we as a company serve them at that point of time so for a for for a short period of time we invested all our energies in terms of starting something which was related to groceries uh, that business did well for a time uh, till the till the time lockdown was there and then we realized that now cook food is back again and we started focusing back on that the second important thing that uh, that that is an interesting paradigm that we realized that uh, contact like covid was all about contact so uh, how to break that chain and that is where we came up with this um, um, this this delivery system called contactless delivery so whenever you order you can opt in for a contactless delivery and the delivery world partner would come to your door and leave it at a surface where as in like a chair or or outside your door wherever there is a safe service click a picture and send it to you that i have left the delivery parcel here now you can go and collect in the next 2 3 minutes 5 minutes and stuff like that so that was one measure and second to build the customer confidence and to ensure that the food is safe uh, we set up a lot of safety stations and these safety stations were our restaurants only so these people were taking temperature checks these were providing sanitizers and hand washing stations to all our delivery partners who are coming and visiting there so we were ensuring that every day a delivery partner is going to 10 places his temperature is getting checked he is sanitizing his hands again and again so that the chances of spreading this is is minimal and along with that the contactless delivery was something that consumers appreciated a lot and that is where i think um, and that is what we as a product company or or probably uh, can can do during such times to ensure that the consumer is also safe and our our delivery partners are also safe uh because it's it's contact both the sides like it it can spread to the consumers as well and as well as to the, to the delivery partners so that i think um, uh so that was the start of the overall covid journey for us but now i think um, for us the volumes are back to pre covid levels and um, we are seeing a very good uh, uh, as in like demand recovery people are realizing that food is safe and uh, and celebrating through food i think uh, that's that's the flavor uh, that that we have we're going with and um, we'll be happy to serve as in like uh, innovate more and more to ensure that uh, the, uh, as in like how can we deliver more safely to the consumers so thank you that's quite interesting to hear and uh, good to hear that uh, the sales are back to pre covid level and i'll get back to have noted down some interesting points that you mentioned about you know pivoting your businesses and also ensuring health and safety but uh, siddharth um, i know you uh, you know you have been Uh, working in this iot and big data space through your clean state technologies and i know it's multi sectoral but uh, is there anything that you have done related to last mile whether it is passenger delivery or whether it is uh, logistics so can you really share um, about the uh, your own company and then you know how you have actually thought through last mile as uh, what are the, some of the challenges that you have faced and how you have been addressing this Siddharth, you are on mute. My apologies. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible now. Hello. Am I am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, go ahead. Perfect. Great. So yeah. Uh, so so at at clean. so at clean slate we predominantly work with large uh, industry setups whether it is la- uh, large e-commerce companies retail companies to essentially help them uh, uh, track and monitor different asset classes whether it is workforce resources or material handling equipment or inventory assets you know with the objective of improving the fulfillment efficiency so most of our projects that we do in, are geared towards helping improve the last mile deliveries uh because by not being able to find the inventory uh, uh, you know that amongst 4000 boxes in a warehouse which is the size of a football stadium if it takes you hours to locate that one box which is inaccurately placed uh, that customer delivery is going to be delayed and impacted and and you're going to spend uh you know, an unproductive amount of time actually looking for that inventory which is inaccurately placed as well so so our our whole much more seamless and in a much more amount of time whether it is a person or an equipment or an asset 
what are some of the challenges um, i understand that you are supporting big industries overcome their own so can you share any of your examples in terms of how you have found um, address specific use cases say for you know whether it was a hospital sector or retail sector you know how sure. you have Sure, sure, sure. So, so I come from a supply chain background as well because I worked at more than uh, you know I've, I've consulted more than thirty factories and warehouses to uh, improve a supply chain, spend over a billion dollars. So I come from a little bit of background to understand what the critical challenges, especially within the factory or the warehouse, are. Now, if you if if you've ever been to one of these larger setups, you have more than you know two hundred, three hundred odd contract workers working just about everywhere. and and in my experience uh, you know some of the challenges that i've 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 uh, seen especially not in the purview specifically of last mile delivery but in the purview of uh, say for middle mile first mile as well as to a certain extent last mile delivery as well is is how uh, uh, less visibility in terms of real operations uh, does the supervisor or the management have about these operations running because when you have a large setup you would have hundreds of workers tens of equipments thousands of boxes moving around everywhere uh, lack of visibility around each of these is something that that is is just you know a, a huge gap that is currently prevalent as in in my previous experience as well as our current uh gig clean slate so uh, uh because it is virtually impossible for a supervisor to be just going around everywhere to have visibility on what is actually happening physically on the ground there are only so many places that one can be at and even when one it is, one one is you know it, it is not to to be able to address that uh uh you know uh, we we that 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 is what the slate was was formulated with the vision of helping uh, you know get real time visibility on each and every moving aspects in the factory or the warehouses sure no it's quite interesting to hear and i'll come back to you um christopher i have some questions for you that i just want to hear is here technologies um, preparing for india e-commerce growth and last mile delivery and what do you see some of um, uh, the differentiators are absolutely yes so so india is a is a very important market for us number one we have a, a very large uh, presence in india um doing it and uh, map content work and uh you know our business is uh the digitization basically of the of the real world creating a digital twin and and for us actually in um logistics and last mile particularly it manifests uh all the challenges that that we have in urban dense urban settings uh, when it comes to traffic when it comes to locating uh, people uh, buildings as well as you know making ac accurate plans so for us uh the the very first um use case that that you have is actually taking an address and turning that into an accurate coordinate so actually um uh, a driver uh, a walker can be actually navigated to that place so uh, with uh, our uh, geocoding engine we have actually a capability to do that for india in india uh, this is one secondly you know then reversing that that whole thing you know basically identifying somebody's location and then turning that Uh, into an address is is the other way around and we we enable that as well but the point is of course our data is only as good as we are able to collect it and things are continuously changing so for us it's so important that we actually um are able to ingest data from other sources uh, because uh, when you think about um let's say especially uh, the case we heard before food delivery uh, which is very dynamic uh, fast moving um not extensive plans are being made it's the quickest way from a to b uh, in a triangle driver a restaurant and then fresh food delivery to the to the end consumer or groceries uh, for that matter um these uh, drivers delivery agents um are a fantastic source of data uh, because they are actually down to the uh, to the consumer level and uh, uh, with the right technical equipment this is actually um gives us the ability to continuously improve our services uh, both the the content side as well as on the on the services routing side and uh this way actually the here platform is uniquely designed to enable that between different parties in the ecosystem 
So a system solution provider that actually offers a last mile solution with the uh, logistics operator connecting the shipper and the consumer through one a native platform that is actually a secure, uh, uh, secure from a privacy standpoint, taking into account um, uh, sensitive data uh, and keep it managed where it, where it belongs. And not, and this is very important for here technologies compared to some of our uh, dear competitors, we are not using location data to serve another business uh, purpose. For us, location means location. So when we actually, um, let's say, collect probe data from a driving car, we only are interested in understanding what is happening for that to that. Have been made to the individual performing that drive. We're not interested in his, um, let's say, advertising um, potential, but we're just um, uh, we're just interested in enhancing continuously our location intelligence and uh, providing better routing services for the next uh, customer of ours. So from that perspective, uh, with a self-learning, continuously uh, learning platform uh, based on um, ML and AI, we are actually uh, very much prepared for a, even a challenging market like India, where we know the address system is not um, as 99.9% uh, .9 accurate as in, for example, where I'm sitting right now in Germany. And uh, so only a learning platform is able to cope with this situation. And uh, so from that perspective, having also um, the ability to collect and process massive amounts of data, you know, and provide that back in real time to our uh, constituents is our biggest strength. So uh, this is a question for all three of you when I am uh, hearing. So, you know, a couple of questions that have come up. So um, do you see, you see yourselves as data companies or technology companies or, um, you know, like consumer service providers? So where do you see yourselves? Christoph, maybe we can start with you and then move to Adesh or whoever wants to pick up this question. Well, I, I think, yeah. I think so. Uh, I, I think I hope at the end of this webinar, it's it's becoming pretty clear to anybody that I mean, if, if it comes down to uh, being data full, um, being a data platform, you know, this is what 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 we are, and we are uh, that actually for more than thirty years. So we have always been in data in the in the business of processing vast amounts of data, starting with satellite imageries in the beginning to now receiving lidar. Uh, live streams from from millions of cars at the same time, processing this data in real time, updating our maps. Uh, so for us, it's it's just an evolution into you know adopting more and more sensors uh, to uh, ingest into the platform to enhance uh, basically our uh, map uh, content, our traffic uh, flows, and helping people to get from A to B in a safe and fast way. So and this is all depending on data. So yes, we are we are a data platform. And we make the data available to our um, customers. Plus, we invite our customers to inject their data and, and create even more meaningful um, uh, solutions uh, from that. Thank you, Christopher, for that. Adish, what would you say to this? Like, how, where do you see yourself? Uh, I mean, are you an uh, eatery service provider or your data company, which happens to be stumbling upon just a last mile delivery? And with now AI and ML, um, I think there's much more. And you know, you have kind of so much data. And are there any new ideas that are cooking that we should be aware of? So uh, thanks, Pavan. So at, at the core of uh, Zomato, we are a we are a food, te food tech company, or basically a consumer tech company. We want to provide a solution to the consumer what they need. Um, and uh, as in, we we enable the movement of food through technology and that's that's the core of what we build um, in terms of how data helps us and we are we are we use extensive amount of data but we are not a data company or a data platform uh, we use that data to ensure that whatever services that we want to provide to the consumers are the best services in terms of how probably 
the gps location or location intelligence or route optimizations can help us to reach faster to the consumer how probably predictive algorithms can tell us that today the weather is different today it's raining today there is a lot of fog and how can we utilize those real time signals to iterate and provide the best expectation and experience to the consumer so i'll, I'll just take an example like uh, and this was something interesting that we tried to solve uh, was that during covid and right now as well there are a lot of hotspots that are created across the city like right now in delhi uh, there are 400 hotspots that were declared a day before now these hotspots are not just one corner of the city but they are in the middle of the city so what's going to primarily happen is not only delivery in these hotspots but also the routes going through these hotspots are going to change so how do we utilize that data to ensure uh, collecting uh, as in like as we get real time data from how our delivery delivery partners are moving how their bikes are taking detours from particular routes tells us that probably this is a hot spot or this is an area or a no go zone or a black zone and how can our algorithm learn faster to provide the right uh, kind of estimates to the consumers so that the promise that we make to the consumer is the right also it helps us in navigating our next order much better from what where it was so uh, yes data definitely helps us a lot uh, and and we we rely on data a lot in terms of identifying the right things to do uh, in terms of where where are more efficiency levers that we could pull uh, to ensure that the consumer is getting the best service uh, and and, the, and also um, there is there is one inherent objective that with 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 the same number of um supply that we have or the same number of delivery partners that we have how can we ensure that we are delivering to more consumers so how can we optimize in terms of the time that gets wasted in uh, handshake handshake between the consumer and the delivery partner handshake between the restaurant and the delivery partner how can we optimize uh, to ensure that there is a minimum time that is wasted there so yes data is the backbone but at the core we are a food tech company and uh, to answer the last part of your question in terms of what next i think uh, zomato uh, we we been uh, in terms of what uh, in terms of innovating new and new products and services that we can provide to our consumers um in terms of the food umbrella we have online ordering we have a food at work which provide services to cafeterias we have our own dining out uh, business uh, with with a pro uh, pro membership that that gives you a lot of benefits so more iterations around what people need what what is good for people or uh, around food is is something that you would see in the near future as well so thank you that's good to hear so siddharth uh, where do you see yeah, yourself uh, now okay that is very good to see Oh, yeah, really, really. Right. Sorry, Pawan. I think uh, maybe I I missed your question because of internet instability. But if I got it correctly, uh, you meant to ask what is uh, where do I see our startup in terms of the spectrum of being a service provider versus a data enabler? Uh, yeah. Is, is that understanding correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we we very much are are as as Christoph mentioned, we have much. more uh, uh, we are i think we are in a much more analogous position to where christopher is and his answer was uh, we we definitely see ourselves as as arbiters of data where we help collect uh, process and help visualize data and information in a way in which the end customer can use it for for enabling and providing more services so uh, uh, to to essentially give you an example you know we started off with uh, and and uh, we we started off by providing location intelligence with a 10 meter accuracy when we initially started clean slate going ahead we started leveraging more and more data sources to capture location more accurately and we we moved from 10 meters to 3 meters and currently we're at 30 centimeters across three dimensions and, and and in the process we've been using multiple data streams from different sources uh you know starting with electromagnetic fields of earth to the ambient wifi signals which are present in the facility to accelerometer data gyroscope data uh you know ble data uh, other rf data and and simultaneous localization mapping so on and so forth and that is where we are currently at and and uh, for us uh, even going ahead uh, you know the the goal is to use more and more uh, sources 
uh, to capture data and present it in a much more accurate and reliable fashion to the end customer so that they can do more with the existing set of resources. So uh, as, as has already been mentioned uh, you know, in the discussion today, uh, we're very much looking at visual streams, so cameras to be able to uh, you know, help customers uh, uh deliver what we were earlier doing with sensors for example uh, we were we were earlier using sensors predominantly to be able to track different asset classes we're currently working with uh, one of the largest automotive companies in india to help them track cars using cameras or we're working with the largest fmcg company in the country to help uh, monitor social distancing using cameras and and uh, you know uh, so that to, so, so, so as to whether uh, social distancing is, is being adhered to with the six feet of distances is being maintained, which are those hot spots where you see a lot of those deviations in terms of social distancing not being complied with. So, so the plan for us is to you know, create a network of, of different data, data sources, uh, starting with electromagnetic fields of earth to cameras to RF sensors so that a comp comprehensive set of you know data could be processed and and provided to the end customers to make a series of decisions starting with planning to operation to uh, you know uh, further optimization so on and so forth well, this is quite interesting um said that uh, before we start the next round of questions rohit can we can you please share the poll result and maybe we can bring up uh, the second question also So looks like uh, the unique challenge in India is um, delivery in dense pockets where home locations are not scientifically planned and uh, unexpected delays in loading, unloading and delivery times. So um, my next question to all three panelists, not in any specific order, maybe we see that since you're on the screen, we can start. Uh, you talked about moving from 10 meters to 3 meters to, um, I think you said 30 centimeter. Did you say that? So in dense locations, like how are you really able to address this kind of uh, challenge? Yeah, so so essentially this is a technical challenge, you know, uh, uh, whether it is in a, in, in a dense location or for that matter, a location in terms of higher density, even of concrete or metal you know you would see that accuracy whether it is uh, uh, accuracy would go for a toss for example gps does not work in indoor spaces predominantly because you know the signals sort of attendings so it, it, it's never accurate in indoor spaces uh, 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 or or for that matter even your regular sources of, of location intelligence be it wi-fi or bluetooth in very dense spaces whether it is higher density in terms of people or or uh, uh, metal or or concrete tends to go for you know uh, t tends to attenuate a little bit and the accuracy uh, does get affected to a certain extent. So so we realized this uh, you know at the very beginning when we were starting CleanSet because we started with all of these technologies that were available. So it it took us a good two years of of you know thorough research and development and testing in more than 800 indoor venues to come up with what we are now at called Inlocate 6.0, which can deliver 30 centimeters of accuracy, where we realize that not a single source of, uh, or rather the most optimal way to deliver location intelligence is never going to be through, through a single source. Uh, whereas in outdoor spaces, while GPS is, is the clear cut winner, uh, uh, you know, and, and the cellular signals are a distant second, but when it comes to indoor spaces, there's, there's no clear winner because there's no technology which is universally accepted. And so that is why we, we started leveraging a combination of different technologies rather than just, you know, putting all our bets on BLE uh, by Eddie Stone or iBeacons or, or Wi-Fi like Cisco did. Uh, so so uh, by, by, I think that is something that we did a bit smartly because we weren't married to any one single technology. So we combined everything and, and started, you know, working on, on a, a machine learning platform, which could, you know, uh, leverage all of these technologies and, and correct, self-correct it as you go. Uh, and, and that is what, you know, has helped us deliver better accuracy as, uh, you know, in all our subsequent projects. Uh, and, and so in dense projects as well, whenever we work in any such pockets right now, uh, we come from that experience of uh, starting to develop and test our technology in the densest of pockets ourselves. So to give you an anecdote, 
you know when initially we were in the you know in 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 the startup space in the garage uh, phase where we were developing the technology we used to go to the most crowded uh, crowded malls uh, uh, and and you know sort of spend about 3 to 4 hours just testing our technology just by moving around walking around with our phones to just you know get a feel of the get a lay of the land and that is how we we've tested this as well we used to just go around test it day in day out we did this for 2 years and that is when we we once we thought we had a reliable piece of technology we we started develop, deploying it for commercial establishments yeah i would like Quite to add interesting to you said you tested the yeah christoph go ahead sorry go ahead oh, i would like to add to this because uh, uh, for here technologies we're in a unique position that we do not only offer the the digital maps the 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 real time traffic and and the data pointers but we also offer the positioning technology um, um and uh, for us uh, positioning does not uh, stop with gps but for us it has always been um, a combination of sensors and uh, uh, wavelengths that have been um, used to uh, allow not only for outdoor uh, accurate outdoor positioning but also for indoor positioning so for us actually uh, when you apply the uh, or add the here positioning api to your solution for example on your end device like a smartphone uh, our protocol um, is independent of the um, method it uh, recognizes the um, the position and uh, we we actually always creating a, a combination of the available signals and uh, with our latest product the um, hd um, positioning uh, we aim for accuracy that is going down to 20 cm level uh, which is available then on uh, devices that have uh, the sensors available but we actually make that happen and uh, we do not stop from outdoor to indoor it's actually basically the same protocol uh, that is being used so um, applications that uh, utilize our positioning technology are basically seamless um, seamless experience can be created from outdoors to indoors and for us that is an absolute um, differentiator um, and, uh, for example, in order to make that happen, we have the largest uh, database of wireless uh, hotspots. Uh, we're talking about uh, 4 billion of hotspots that are automatically updated from actually the chipsets of certain uh, smartphone vendors. So it's a real-time database. You can even load that offline. It's, it's highly um, uh, condensed. And so uh, even offline positioning is possible. Um, with our technology. I just want to point that out and I will get to uh, some of the details also in the uh, final presentation. So thanks for bringing this up, uh, Pavan, and uh, so that we, we follow the same philosophy. Interesting. And um, Adish? So uh, Pavan, for uh, us, it's not, uh, I think I think it's great to go to as, as uh, precise as possible, 20 centimeter, 20, 30 centimeter. But for us, it is about a house. And, and uh, luckily for us, houses are big. So for us, yes, the challenges in the dense, denser part of the city, uh, there, are, there are challenges in terms of GPS accuracy. And what also happens is both our consumers and delivery partners um, use their own mobile phones and use their own service provider. And with the kind of GPS uh, accuracy that probably a mobile phone and a GPS uh, service provider combination, there are different kind of errors that we get. Like some, some mobile phones plus a service provider network would give you an accuracy up to a 200 meter. Some will give you up to a 10 meter. But that 200 meter also is a challenge for us to solve. Now, how do we solve that is, is in terms of two, two folds. So we divide people who have already ordered from one particular address. That's very easy to solve for because we've already made a successful delivery at that point in time or that place. So that data is saved in the system and we, we can probably after a couple of deliveries use our uh, learning algorithms to tell that even if the consumer GPS location is somewhere else, but the actual, actual delivery happened somewhere else. So how do we map those things is, is something that is an interesting part. But what is more difficult to solve is, the, uh, is an address which is added for the first time. Like I as a user have a new address or I am a new user to the platform and I add a new address. Now I don't have in the system any intelligence. And that is where we have to rely on um, uh, some external inter intelligence in terms of how do we map that address to a pin. Uh, and also in India, we find this very, very um, unique, or, or I, I'm not sure if, if other countries also have this problem, that um, 
from a company perspective or from from a organization perspective we are very finicky about the location pinpoints but the consumers are not um, that sensitive about that till they realize that if they put a wrong pin their delivery might be facing a lot of challenges or a lot of delays uh, so that challenge in terms of the first time consumer education or without education how can we solve it through tech is something that uh, that we are trying to figure out and solve but yeah there are there are certain interesting things like what christoph was talking about in terms of how do we decode an address to a gps location or a coordinate is something that we are trying to work upon and uh, this definitely is giving us better accuracy but yeah still we need to take those steps further to reach to ensure that every consumer who is adding a first address is is accurate for us because um, not only is about that particular order being delivered at the right time what it does is that one order getting delayed uh, leads to a bullwhip bullwhip effect on the rest of the orders like one delay of 10 minutes can screw up the next deliveries which are which are lying further after this so it is very very important from a location intelligence perspective and uh, yes these are the two two main main challenges that we are trying to solve for i think a perfect use case for uh, hd positioning um identifying really the first time location of a consumer so the pin is accurately yeah. you know perfect thank you so um rohit maybe we can bring up the second question for the poll so we'll take a short uh, poll question right now yeah do you think indian supply chain players leverage technology to drive customer experience or operational efficiency i think we heard about it and i'll also let uh, siddharth uh, atish and uh, christoph comment on this as well and i think uh, the way the question has been listed um, if we can think in terms of how the companies across global tech companies are also doing so is this something we are doing in india i think it's position more on um, indian scenario as well so before we see the poll results maybe we can go a quick round of response to this i know we just talked about it um what do you think atish like globally are we there yet so i think um, in terms of uh, uh, i would say that given the challenges that we have in terms of uh, the address mapping system and uh, uh, the accuracy of gps and the signal strength and all of those things Um, i think from a tech solve perspective we are there and and i think uh, in terms of technology uh, if if it is implemented in one part of the world it it can easily be implemented in another other part of the world but i think the la- landscape is very different probably in a in a city which is uh, and I'll, i'll give you examples from india only like chandigarh uh, it's it's a very very structured city where the roads are highly perpendicular and the address system is much better it's a planned city whereas an an and uh, whereas another city which is organically grown there the difference between these two cities is is immense and in terms of how our location intelligence or accuracy uh, helps us more in the city which is much more planned better is higher compared to other cities so yes there is there is some delta that we need to cover uh, but from a tech perspective in and and in terms of how do we use that data to optimize for that particular city yes i think uh, in terms of the uh, amount of technology and amount of data processing that that the companies in india are doing is great and and we can take examples of not only food technology but also about uh, anybody who is providing hyper local services be it uh, cab uh, cab services uh, or uh, it could be basically um, any any other kind of services which are provided at home all of these players are utilizing uh, the the local intelligence that we have uh, of of uh, the locations and trying to optimize all all the individual legs that are there in terms of uh, optimizing the the route planning or or customer experience like for example there there might be two points which are just 10 meters away uh, from an aerial distance perspective but there is a u turn which is going to take like probably 5 kilometers how do you optimize for that so yes those are some interesting use cases but um, as in like in terms of solutions with more data we'll be able to uh, solve them much better absolutely i think uh, is it uh, my connection or i'm still here 
<laughs> yeah, I, I I think we all are here. Uh, Pawan, uh, Pawan, are you are you able to hear us? I think we I lost you for a minute. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. So I was asking Christopher and Siddharth to respond uh, to this question. That do you see the uh, both technology readiness and operational efficiency in Indian context? Well, I would say in, in general, and I look at it from a global perspective, but um, and um, it's been a while since I've been to India, but the one thing is true, right? Um, nearly everybody uh, participating in our economy now has a smart device, connected device in their hands. And this is the, the one uh, thing that connects everything. Um, so it's, it has a location, um, it, it has a connectivity, it is personalized and we can make it actually secure and private. And from that perspective, I would say it's only a matter that um, actually service providers are starting to leverage the available technologies. And um, uh, for, for us, uh, it is so important uh, to enable the platform that we also introduce the marketplace for location data. So actually, um, Adish, with, with all the data you have actually already collected, um, you might find actually other consumers on the marketplace to actually leverage that data or even contribute back to you to, to quickly enhance uh, on that. So you can move even faster. So for us, in the end, I would say technology is ready. The demand is there. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a burning platform that companies that do not uh, uh, apply technology now in the COVID situation will not survive this pandemic. And from that perspective, um, I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic that um, uh, the situation is improving now so rapidly that everybody can benefit in the ecosystem. Siddharth? Yeah. So uh, I think I, 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 given that we've majorly been focused on the Indian context, I, I personally find that we are, uh, we've somewhat adopted it. And, and I think that's understandable given that there is a, when it, and, and I speak from the context of say manufact, you know, larger enterprises per se. Uh, till the time there's going to be a, a huge difference in GDP per capita, there is always going to be a difference in adoption of, of technologies because in the end, the ROI is what is going to drive technology adoption uh, for any of the enterprises. Uh, if, if, you know, However much accurate or precise, no company is going to adopt it. Uh, and, and in India, that is one, that's been one of the reasons why we've seen that it's, it's, it's uh, 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 you know, uh, to, to certain pro problems other than investing in technology uh, and investing heavily in the, the you know, in, in terms of capital expenditure or operational expenditure. So, so that, that is one reason why uh, that, I mean, that's, that's, uh, one main reason why I don't see a huge or a widespread adoption of technology uh, yet by supply chain providers. But having said this, I, I definitely see that it is improving, especially in the wake of COVID, where people were made to do, uh, were, were made to uh, produce and ship more with less. Uh, I think they started looking at technology uh, uh, far uh, more optimistically and uh, you know far more urgently than they did before. In fact, I think uh, uh, with with uh, uh, apps like Arogya Setu or these contact tracing and social distancing app, I think that's been the biggest experiment of, of using location uh, outside of uh, Google Maps or, or uh, 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 such use cases. Uh, you know, uh, educated on the importance of for that matter, just, you know, the pre awareness of location uh, as to how can it be used for, you know, so many more things. Uh, so I'm optimistic, uh, given the COVID scenario, as Christoph said, uh, uh, but, uh, but we have a long go. Thank you, Siddharth. That's interesting. Um, so we, in fact, have very interesting questions from the uh, audience. So what I would suggest is, uh, Rohit, if we can pull out the results of the second poll question. So I think uh, in terms of both leveraging technology to drive customer experience or operational efficiency, um, majority feel that yes, we are somewhat there, 
while 30 percent um, agree that we are there so it's like almost 85 percent and i think that somewhat and no way we are behind um, needs to be addressed as well so what i would really request uh, suggest now is that if we can continue this discussion rohit with the question and answers from audience if you can pull out those questions and read out to the speakers that would be really helpful we have some interesting questions yeah we've received some uh, fantastic questions and i'm going to move through them in the order of uh, popularity okay uh, so the first one we have is uh, how do you define and measure the accuracy of the delivery address given an address how do you define the confidence level of that lat long that it triangulates so that it's accurate uh, which one of you would like to take that well it's a very technical question right about uh, the, the positioning and the geocoding and the, the here geocoder API, uh, where you would actually uh, provide a, a, a let long, um, the positioning um, API would give you actually a, 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 a confidence level for that, how accurate this location is, and that will be taken into account in the geocoder. So from that perspective, uh, with the here technology stack, you are able to actually uh, be very confident uh, how realistic that uh, um, address would be. And what we typically do is we we are not just uh, pinpointing one uh, lat long coordinate from a positioning, but what we do, we actually take into account multiple measurements and then the uh, accuracy improves dramatically because uh, we also have algorithms in place to actually understand how likely it is that this space is actually occupied. Think about a road network you know, where you have actually the GPS uh, trace is uh, flipping on and off 10, 50 meters away from the road, but actually on the sequence of the, the GPSs plus um, the likelihood that somebody would be driving there, we can actually provide the best uh, route matching experience to ensure that actually um, the GPS trace is mapped then to the road network. And the similar thing um, we're doing uh, in real time when it comes to uh, simple positioning and continuously enhancing that capability with utilizing multiple uh, technologies. So radio network, radio maps uh, that actually understand uh, the, uh, the, the signal strength of um, not only cell towers, but also Wi-Fi hotspots in your vicinity, plus uh, the GPS uh, data uh, continuously enhances the accuracy. And if, if anybody is interested in this in more detail, then um, I think you should really get in touch with here.com uh, and uh, uh, my colleagues in India can, can really give you a, a very, very detailed uh, explanation of that. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, I'll move on to the second one now. Uh, so what kind of optimization is applied for dispatch in real time? Uh, don't optimization algorithms take long to solve? That's the second one we have. Uh, Adish, would you like to take that? Yeah, so well, let sure. me take a shot at that. So um, I think uh, uh, to answer the first part of the question in terms of there are a lot of moving parts that, that are there. In, uh, so let's take a life cycle of an order. Uh, the consumer places the order, the restaurant is going to take an, some amount of time to prepare that order. In parallel, the delivery partner is going to take some amount of time to reach to the restaurant. And then there is a delivery leg which is independent of both of these things. Uh, but uh, what kind of optimizations can we do here? There are two kinds of optimizations that we can do. One, basically, uh, that the delivery partner is reaching just in time when the restaurant is uh, preparing the food and the food is ready so that the time that, that the delivery partner is going to spend at the restaurant can be minimized. So that, that is one, one thing that we can do. The second thing is basically if there are two orders from the same premises or the same building and from the same response, can we can we club those orders? Can we batch those orders? Uh, but at the same time, if they are far apart, then can would that lead to a poor customer experience? So with these paradigms, uh, we try to optimize and uh, ensure that at the same time the consumer experience is not going bad, but we are driving, we are taking out the maximum efficiency out of the system. Uh, that keeping ensuring that the con consumer experience is top notch. Uh, whatever we have promised, we are delivering in, in that time. Uh, but if there is some juice that is left in the overall cycle, how can we leverage that? 
so that's that is where the optimization works and i think uh, in terms of optimization algorithms taking time with with the kind of tech advancement that uh, we are in right now and i think across uh, across different industries and across different companies uh, there are there are algorithms which which do this in in nanoseconds or probably milliseconds uh, which give us that answer in terms of which orders to probably uh, uh, dispatch after 2 minutes or which to dispatch right now and and things like that so as in uh, uh, these these technological solutions definitely uh, make us uh, better than probably not optimizing but at the same time all of these things are moving like yesterday a restaurant took 5 minutes to prepare a dish today is going to take 10 minutes identifying that is something that is that is uh, that is very difficult so uh, then again data plays a very important role in terms of what is the uh, and and talking in uh, in very basic language what is the median and the mean of of that uh, restaurant preparation time and how can you optimize with that so things like that definitely help and and there are there are much more advanced algorithms which learn on their own to give us better answers every day yeah sure. and i think i would like to i would like to add to this uh, I, i think the use case is very very important so when you have the fresh food delivery this triangle of driver restaurant uh, consumer literally these routes and the optimization and finding the the the, the closest driver to then dispatch and then uh, you know trigger the um, that is happening in sub seconds uh, and that is uh, possible with here uh, apis as well um when it comes to let's say uh let's say a van loaded with 150 deliveries with a high stop frequency pre-planned of course um putting 10,000 um jobs onto 100 vehicles that might take a couple of minutes but we're not talking hours anymore and uh, uh with here and uh, the the large scale matrix routing we we are able to produce actually a distance and and time matrix based on real routes and traffic for 10,000 stops within seconds and then we apply actually the algorithms to optimize the the perfect solving the vehicle routing problem in minutes so from that perspective um yes if you put very difficult constraints very accurate time windows very limited resources that you have available the algorithm will take a bit longer but in general if you um understand your constraints and you understand your algorithm you you have a very very efficient way in the meantime Uh, including real time data incidents meaning street closures accidents and other things uh, real time traffic plus the the accurate road network is all available at your fingertips um so from that perspective i think we are, we're at a point at a tipping point from technology where this is available to to literally any business sure uh so moving on to the next question uh, i think this one's for uh, adish again uh, so how did you manage the change in data patterns during covid and all hence all the predictions that power logistics yeah so um as in like uh, all all the industries not only us saw, saw a shift in how how the demand patterns were changing in terms of um, and then specifically in food uh, how your lunch peaks are different from dinner changed completely differently before covid and after covid how your weekends were more skewed uh, pre covid after post covid these these data patterns really changed a lot and similarly patterns changed on the delivery partner service side as well now like like there were delivery partners who were giving us uh, 20 hours a week uh, would their behavior change to 10 hours a week or probably 30 hours a week because uh, those are the things are also going to go into demand supply planning so yes it it was initially challenging in terms of how do we identify these patterns but probably in a couple of weeks we had enough data to understand the initial demand patterns in initial supply patterns how they are going to marry and uh, though uh, it it's uh, it's very difficult to optimize without data so an easier approach that we took was probably let's let's over invest during this time and ensure that the consumer needs are fulfilled at the right time so for sure. a couple of weeks we could over invest in the market to collect those data points and once we have those data points uh, we can iterate and optimize accordingly so that that's how we did it uh, in terms of identifying the right patterns for and then this this change for different cities as well like like south india we have very differently north india we have very differently so how do you optimize for all of these things is was an interesting bit to solve but uh, uh um, with with the kind of uh, number of orders that we have multiple orders in the same city uh, the, the the richness of data is really high 
uh, which helps us to optimize for these uh, answers faster than later. Sure. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, this one is for Christoph. Uh, how do you convert person to IP uh, or, or location? Well, the, the, the point number one is, uh, is in your hands, your smartphone. It has a GPS sensor. It has a radio sensor. So, um, you know, you, you need to have an app. And obviously, um, the person has to uh, open up to share his location. And so for us, it's actually more important to make this secure and private in the sense of that uh, when somebody allows location um, um, detection, then, you know, we're actually making 100% sure that this data set, this piece of information is only used for the intended use case and not for anything else. So for us, um, actually resolving an address uh, position, that is, uh, that is daily business, that's easy enough. Uh, but for us, privacy by design is even more important so that actually uh, the consumer's um, rights are, um, are also honored. Okay, sure. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, so this is from Harsha Karanth. Uh, and uh, Harsha has asked, what are the best practices for uh, accurately promising estimated delivery dates to customers? Uh, and then well, secondly, what is dynamic updates of estimated delivery dates in case of disruption in one or more legs of delivery? Uh, so uh, Siddharth, uh, if, if uh, we haven't, uh, if, would you like to take this one? No, I, I think Christoph and Adish are better suited to address okay, so, this. So Christoph, if you can take this, I uh, I think Adish has gotten disconnected. So if you can just... Uh, oh yeah, sure. So obviously we talked a lot about this in the meantime, um, you know, traffic information is, is important, but then the, when you think about um, uh, the traffic situation and then you would apply a different mode of transport, let's say a two wheeler, um, and uh, your road uh, is actually uh, blocked uh, for car and van traffic, but the two-wheeler, be it a bike or a, or a scooter, can zip through, you know, you have to actually be very smart about this, right? So you need to know the mode of transportation, and then you need to apply basically correction factors based on uh, machine learning for different scenarios to actually then see you know, how um, uh, predictions uh, for the estimated time of arrival uh, are influenced by all these factors. So um, for us, it's very important where you have, let's say, a vehicle, a car, a car routing, you know, things are pretty accurate and you understand the traffic, but the moment you change the modality, you need to take this into account. And this is where I believe also uh, what we heard before from Zomato, they, they're creating so, so much data to then understand for different uh, urban environments uh, with uh, uh, neatly laid out city versus an organically grown city, things are starting to change. So you need to have actually, um, uh, you know, situational awareness into the predictions. And this only comes from machine learning. So massive amounts of data that need to be processed. And um, you need to actually connect to uh, the driver themselves that actually are on the road to fulfill the orders. And if you have that information, then you are able to make your prediction algorithms better. And this for us is actually the most important thing about the self-learning platform. And uh, uh, connecting these things in a systemic way is, uh, is what we do. Okay, okay, sure. Uh, so now we, uh, Siddharth, if you can uh, help us answer a few questions. Uh, so Siddharth, uh, somebody has asked uh, Mr. Ravindra Mohan that, do you have a service where we give the coordinates and your application can give the pass, uh, can, can give the path traversed by that device. Uh, it is an inanimate object and uh, hence mobile can not be given it to it, uh, but it lets out long longitude coordinates. So that, I mean, it's a fairly elaborated. I, I, would you like to take that? Sure, I mean, yeah, it, it's essentially just storing uh, location historically and, and uh, you know, sort of uh, map, uh, sto uh, uh, and just sort of uh, 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 remapping them or replotting them on the map to be able to delve into the historical location trail. So that is very much done, whether it is for an inanimate object or whether it is for a person walking around. So uh, we, we, we do uh, uh, deliver that. In fact, uh, one of the ways in which we try to do that is, is, is uh, where, say, in a factory like, like Bosch, uh, 
where uh, you know a, a certain there's a certain route within the factory and the warehouse where material needs to be delivered to the assembly station on the shop floor but the right material wasn't delivered at the right time because of which production was stopped and that resulted potentially say in huge losses for the for the facility now to be able to uh, uh, investigate that uh, you one one needs information around why that happened in the first place so one would need information around who was responsible for delivering that material to that assembly station where uh, where uh, production was stopped and and what route did they take sometime before to deliver that material did they stop uh, did they did they forget to deliver the material did they stop there for some time but but uh, the material wasn't collected so to be able to investigate into any of these uh, 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 possible root causes uh, we we do have a historical location trail in 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 terms of you know an instant replay of of that particular uh, route or heat map analytics are another representation of that or spaghetti diagram analytics are another representation of how uh, sure. you know say any assets or or uh, you know uh, people move inside a facility whether it is in a retail store to understand customer preferences with uh, you know uh, or rather customer behavior within the store or whether it is movement of workers in in the facility Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so uh, now, after this, uh, uh, Sadat, maybe one more uh, with you. Uh, what are some of the sensor-based uh, interventions done to ensure safety of the package that is uh, shipped or stored in a warehouse? Right. So, so some the some of the thing, when it when it comes to uh, ensuring uh, safety of these, I think this this question is sort of for other. Uh, it it is dependent on the context of different categories of products if it is you know a perishable good uh, or uh, you know there are certain interventions which are required be it in terms of cold state uh, cold chain storage or if it is a chemical product there are certain other interventions required in terms of maintaining humidity at a certain level or or maintaining uh, uh, you know uh other uh, uh, chemical presence or gaseous presence in it, it was certain proportion so so uh, currently there are quite a few of them starting with humidity maintenance temperature maintenance to sure. physical operation as well as to whether they've been you know moved around in a harsh manner they've been thrown around how are they being uh, you know carried around as well during transit or for that matter how is that uh, how is the humidity gas maintained pressure maintained all these things are, are all these sensor interventions are available and are being used wherever uh, you know it is a more urgent problem and and a far more important problem which could potentially result in shrinkage of inventory if these parameters are not maintained so they are being effectively used sure sure uh, so now i have one for christoph uh, christoph uh, how do you ensure the location accuracy if the delivery partner is in a no network zone how how does that happen Well, so number one, um, our um, map uh, content uh, and the routing algorithms are available through our mobile SDKs or software development kits in a completely offline mode. So um, one can actually build an application with our SDK that allows a, a driver, a user, to actually make um, the data for his uh, delivery area, uh, say uh, an Indian state or, or a large city, completely available offline. So as long as he has um, some location awareness on his device, uh, but no data connection, he's able to actually uh, sure. complete the routes in a, in a safe way. And then, and then secondly, with the um, offline positioning stack, Um, also, uh, the means of radio networks, where one doesn't have connectivity, but he still measures actually the signal strength of multiple Wi-Fi hotspots, and the offline positioning stack, we are still able to resolve his address and his position. Sure. And so, from that perspective, utilizing our here mobile SDK allows you to build actually a complete offline uh, delivery experience. Okay, great. Uh, so next, we I have a question from uh, Kokila Rao. Uh, Kokila says, with no touch protocol, verification of orders is definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, there might be a discrepancy or a complaint related to the loss between the customer and the product provider. How is the settlement reached? Is is that uh, something you can take, Christoph? 
Yeah, I can I can definitely say how we as a as a technology sure. provider would help actually a company like uh, Zomato to actually solve this problem in order to prevent actually uh, a complaint. And we heard already one is the uh, in the contactless scenario where you have actually the, the consumer defines actually an accurate or a defined uh, a drop um, drop location saying like the chair in front of his apartment or things like that then the delivery driver actually takes a photo but now the most important thing is what you want to you want to prevent fraud and uh, this is let's say less uh, less problematic let's say in a fresh food scenario but uh, rather than with uh, actually uh, finished goods and 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 more valuable items if you are able to marry actually the photo with a timestamp and a trusted location you know if you are able to combine these three into one then you actually have um, the 100% proof of delivery at that particular location without actually a signature. And uh, if you're able to connect actually the real-time information of that trusted location with the photo and um, the timestamp to the um, consumer uh, connecting the two devices, then he's able to pick it up uh, in, uh, in a timely manner. So for us, actually, it's very important that the concept of trusted location which is very easy to spoof. When you think about an Android device, uh, it's a bit more difficult on an uh, iOS, uh, iPhone device, but on an Android device, it's very simple to actually spoof your location. Uh, a lot of uh, ride-hailing uh, drivers actually uh, use that practice to actually get the better jobs. And um, uh, actually in the food uh, delivery, we, we see the same thing. So only with um, actually uh, here positioning uh, technology plus the trusted location, you're actually able to prevent the spoofing of the location and this way also preventing fraud in delivery case. So for us, sure. actually, uh, fraud prevention is coming also down to a large part in, in a trusted location. Okay, great, great. Uh, so with that, I think we've answered most of the uh, question and answers you know, raised by our audience. If you have any other queries, please do feel free to connect with us offline. Uh, with that, uh, you know, we can move to the last agenda item uh, where Christoph is going to do a presentation and shed light on some of the aspects we touched upon uh, as part of the Q&A section as well as the uh, discussion. Christoph, over to you. Thank you so much. So now for the last leg of this, uh, this really interesting panel, let me talk a bit about here technologies. You already heard a lot uh, um, from me about here as a, a location platform technology provider. But just to give you a bit more perspective, uh, we are actually not a startup. Uh, we are um, employing uh, more than 9,000 employees across the globe. Um, we actually uh, provide global maps. So 200 countries somewhat uh, are mapped by us and available to our customers. And um, what we're very proud about, we, we are uh, having a growing number of developers utilizing our services. So um, nearly 400,000 developers are utilizing our APIs and web services already uh, on a global basis. And uh, we um, you know, received the honor and uh, through hard work over the last decades to actually be ranked the number one location platform in every analyst uh, evaluation that has been going on in the, in the recent years. But uh, more important for us is actually, how do we actually uh, support businesses uh, to solve their um, uh, challenges? And uh, we're actually um, making our services uh, not only available to the automotive industry, which is actually our heritage. So uh, a lot of, you know, the majority of the cars with built-in navigation systems are utilizing our maps for many, many, many decades. However, our web services content and, and dynamic um, uh, content is available to many other industries. And of course, today we're talking about transportation logistics and retail uh, coming down to the, the supply chain and fleet management markets. Well, we've, we've heard a lot and talked a lot about uh, the impact of the pandemic. And uh, we, we've seen this um, uh, and heard this uh, also from our fellow panelists here how it impacted also the Indian businesses. And um, I think some of these numbers are really, really interesting. So uh, we see that there are 30 million commercial vehicles on Indian roads. 
And it's pretty much a 50-50 balance between um, trucks and um, the, the other modes of transportation, which actually includes also uh, uh, and probably uh, uh, vans and, and cars. And then on top of that, you have the, the massive amount of two-wheelers. Um, this actually is a, is a very interesting mix and just uh, very, very high numbers compared to other countries in the world. Uh, secondly, uh, we also see that uh, uh, Indian businesses uh, still are not utilizing all the technology at hand. However, as we discussed, the potential uh, has been identified. And um, at, at this point in time, by utilizing outdated technology, we see that uh, more than half of the businesses are actually concerned about that uh, outdated technology is actually harming their business. And this is only accelerated uh, through the pandemic, right? So why we are so interested in last mile um, uh, use cases is because number one, it's actually the most complex part of the supply chain. Plus uh, it, it, it is, um, 50% uh, of the total cost of a delivery actually occurs on the last mile uh, when you look at an average um, uh, across uh, all the legs of the journey of a good. And so we see that actually digitizing last mile, um, you know, allows you to, to enhance the customer experience. However, the last mile has a bullwhip effect on the middle and the first mile. So the things are really connected and the demand is driven from the consumer side. The experiences are built around the consumer and then you need to get your entire supply chain ready for this. Now here Technologies is actually uh, in the business of supporting uh, transportation logistics uh, for, for decades now with our here location services. And uh, our um, content and web services are utilized in commercial vehicle management, supply chain visibility. So we talked about um, the tracking of goods um, and then uh, obviously also the last mile uh, fleet operations. And for us, when we, we again look uh, particularly at the last mile, um, the, the main drivers are obviously operational efficiency, um, the uh, improved service quality from a customer consumer standpoint. However, we also need to never forget the drivers. In the end, uh, we can talk about the autonomous world and drones, but uh, for many, many years, we will, we will see that the majority of the deliveries are still hand delivered by drivers utilizing multiple modalities. And it's very, very important that we actually support the drivers to keep them safe and be able to uh, do a great job in enhancing that customer experience, right? And in the end, uh, as anything, you need to build this on a very scalable and reliable operational system. So that means uh, the platform that you're basing this on uh, needs to be uh, highly resilient, plus providing all the capability to scale with your business. And this is actually what, what we are doing. Um, you know, we, we provide um, a lot of solutions that allow you to, number one, uh, utilize accurate and granular map content, uh, enable dynamic planning and custom routing scenarios, which come in very handy when you also uh, think about situations where we, we might not yet have the best data because it's on a private yard or it's a large uh, uh, dwelling um, building. And how do we actually ensure uh, maps come together, um, private maps and uh, public maps? Uh, this is something that we do very well. And then you can actually apply our navigation SDKs on top of that. Um, we talked about driver assistance and safety for us that is uh, paramount. So to actually provide real time solutions for the driver, uh, both into their in-dash navigation systems as well as on their smartphones, so uh, they actually have a, a better experience and uh, are safer on the road. Uh, we talked a lot about places, so, um, but more importantly, point addressing. So understanding actually the hyper-local situation around a certain address and make that uh, data available to uh, anybody who needs that, be it a delivery driver, be it uh, actually a planner when he plans the tours, uh, be it actually a system that um, matches uh, drivers with um, with consumers. And in the end, we actually structure our offerings into um, a self-service uh, developer portal where you can actually go in as a developer and get access to the whole here world and start um, uh, coding yourself away. But you can also work with our um, solution architects in the different countries, uh, as well as uh, particularly also in India, 
where we offer uh, more packaged market solutions to help you with your business to grow and uh, faster with location technology that we actually packaged into um, you know, particular bundles uh, around dynamic route optimization or driver facing solutions. So you can actually move faster with your own um, solution delivery. Or, and this is actually what I also would like to talk about now, is you um, invest in our here last mile uh, system, which offers a uh, full ready to deploy software as a service application where all the location intelligence, all our routing, all our content is actually baked in. So we are actually in the process of uh, introducing here last mile to the market right now. Uh, the first beta customers are live since uh, Q3 this year. And uh, in Q1 2021, we are aiming uh, for general availability of that platform. So it offers actually a web planning dashboard, uh, which uh, provides a high performance route optimization for you know, uh, uh, dozens of uh, commercial vehicles. So you have actually the ability to pre-plan very complex uh, uh, routes. You can optimize the tours for thousands of jobs. And uh, once you dispatch these jobs, you actually have the ability through the mobile driver app, which is uh, included in the package um, to enable real-time tracking and full visibility of your, um, of your last mile operation. Um, as I already explained before, the driver app utilizes our um, uh, native uh, SDK uh, for currently for Android and, and for iOS in Q1 which allows uh, not only for traffic aware navigation, but also offline routing and uh, allowing to connect everything back into the, uh, the backend system so that continuously updates are being um, uh, used for updated ETA calculation. So when it, when it comes down to um, uh, the benefits of a system like that, it's clear we need to actually, starting from the right, improve the customer service levels this can only be done through technology, support the drivers um, and uh, increase driver retention only uh, very um, you know, satisfied and safe drivers will actually retain in the business and provide the best experience. But at the same time, you need to have a look at the cost. So reducing up to operational um, uh, expenses is super important and bring down the cost to serve of each of the deliveries. And we actually, um, um, pride ourselves to put everything into a GDPR compliant and um, uh, data privacy recognizing framework. So for us, um, it's very, very important that data is only used for the use case that you and your customers signed up for. So here's an example of an e-commerce provider that has been using our beta system um, already. And uh, we've seen um, it's, a, it's an e-commerce player that is uh, has been using our system uh, for a while for uh, same day deliveries. And we've seen um, already a 15% higher asset utilization in utilizing our planning. Uh, we had a much faster planning cycle uh, than before. And we were able to actually help the customer to um, adjust to dynamic situations uh, using real-time traffic, um, road closures and incident information. So ultimately uh, the drivers were actually uh, much calmer and uh, delivering more stops in the same time. Everything was powered by the here location services and uh, now this uh, product uh, will be available to everybody to consume. But obviously we're not stopping there. So for us, there are a number of um, challenges that we see and this is why we're investing actually in the last mile where the planning, the routing, the driving is basically for us just the starting point. The next big thing for us is the electrification of the last mile. And we see this on different modalities, um, moving away from uh, you know, combustion engines, uh, both on two wheelers as well as into four wheelers. Um, and uh, suddenly the range of a vehicle uh, becomes an important constraint into the planning process. So our system is already um, EV ready. Uh, from the standpoint that our tour plans take um, the, the current max distance into account when you provide that information. This could come, for example, from a telematic system, a telematic box that is directly connected to the device, uh, to the vehicle. Secondly, driver safety. So with the here LifeSense um, uh, product, we are actually enabling 
and turning each smartphone with the driver app into actually a safety device, into a dash cam that is connecting and uh, identifying harsh braking maneuvers, uh, potholes and uh, situations on the road. And ultimately, we are able actually to uh, also process uh, map updates uh, from this information. So visualizing and learning from the driver experience for us is critical to enhance continuously our, our product. And when it comes to um, the driver on the road to actually the, the final meter when we, that we call uh, the situation where you actually stop your vehicle and then you actually do the, the last leg of your journey by foot, um, connecting outdoor and indoor with a seamless experience is for us, um, let's say, the, the final goal. So in the uh, last couple of minutes, I would actually like to talk about this uh, use case from last mile to final meter. And uh, basically starts with uh, the here indoor maps. So um, actually we have already mapped uh, 10 thousands of venues around the globe that are available as a here map. And this basically means if it's available as a here map, you can apply all the routing, all the positioning, all the um, uh, geolocation um, APIs onto the, the map as if it would be a public map for the public road network. And so um, we have a service that allows you also as a customer to come in with your own geometry data. And we can take CAD drawings, uh, aerial photos, uh, plus additional information to create the first base map and then allow you to add additional features to it, uh, indoor points of interest, uh, connectivity like store, stairs, escalators, and elevators. Uh, very important, the entire indoor parking. Um, and um, when you connect indoor to outdoor, entrances and exits become super, super important. So the first thing is really to, uh, with uh, here indoor maps, you are able to create this representation of your buildings. And then when you combine that with what we have talked about already, the here indoor positioning, you suddenly have a complete solution also for indoors. Where things become really interesting is uh, our latest product in the um, uh, high definition GNSS positioning, where we actually bring submeter accuracy, like I talked about 20 centimeters possible to provide a full cloud service that enables any device that has uh, the right sensors um, and chipsets to improve the accuracy compared to uh, available systems uh, at large. So my uh, time is up and um, I would like to uh, just close with a number of key takeaways. So number one, here technologies as a location platform is actually addressing challenges in the last mile, making not only uh, services and uh, solutions available, but also uh, complete applications like the here last mile product, which is a full service uh, SaaS application. And in combination with our latest addition to the positioning stack, our HD GNSS positioning, we actually enabling use cases like uh, from the last meter, uh, from the last mile to the final meter and making things uh, available to our customers. So if this has sparked your interest and there's so much to talk about and I could do this for hours, I would like to encourage you to actually get in touch with us and then start a discussion with our Indian colleagues uh, supported by our global product management team to actually find solutions for your business. Many thanks. Okay, great. Uh, Christoph, if you can just stop sharing your uh, presentation. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, thanks uh, so much uh, for that, Christoph. Uh, you know uh, that wonderful presentation and for your time, all all the uh, uh, speakers. Uh, thank you so much for taking out the time to join us today. Uh, secondly, we would also like to thank our audience uh, for joining us today, and you know for all your inquisitiveness. Uh, we would especially like to take this time to thank our uh, partner here, Technologies, for supporting us. Really appreciate the support. And uh, we will be doing uh, very soon uh, a, a session on asset tracking through IoT, uh, uh, a session on that on 2nd December at uh, 2 p.m. again. So do join us for that in, uh, in, in the meantime. Here's a bye from all of us. <laughs>